so in this session i'll be discussing about histone modifications and their role in transcription activation now a basic question comes that what are these histones histones are nothing but some basic proteins uh, which contain certain basic amino acids like lysine and arginine basic amino acids means they are rich in positive charge now uh, they are of five major types that is histones are of five major types that is h to a so they are h2 h2 b h3 h4 and h1 out of this h1 is also known as a linker histone anyway uh, details about will be discussed in some other session now i'll be discussing mainly about these particular four proteins which form a core or which form an octamer that is two units of each two units of h2a two units of h2a h2b h3 and h4 all together form an octamer they form an octamer that is they form a core around which the dna gets wrapped so around this the dna is wrapped i'm sorry the dna gets wrapped around this core or histone octamer and uh, 146 base pairs of dna take one full complete turn and in the second round they, they take a three-fourth of the turn and continue further to wrap another octamer another histone octamer in, in in the same way it proceeds to give a, um, a beads on a string appearance now this core of histone along with dna is known as a nucleosome so nucleosome is a fundamental unit of chromatin which contains a core of histone proteins around which the DNA is wrapped. Around which the DNA is wrapped. So, so this is uh, about the histone proteins. Now, how do the histone proteins bind the uh, DNA? Now, as I said, histone proteins are positively charged. That means they are uh, containing positively charged amino acids. And we know that DNA is negatively charged. Why? Because it, it is made up of sugar phosphate backbone. Backbone to which the uh, nucleic, uh, the nitrogenous bases are attached. That is the nitrogenous bases are attached to the sugar molecules. Now the negative charge of the DNA molecule is because of the phosphate groups. Now uh, this uh, negatively charged uh, phosphate groups or the DNA uh, get, uh, gets attach uh, uh, gets wrapped around the histone proteins which are positively charged so here we can see that the positive charge is nullified with the negative charge of the dna and this is the reason why the dna gets wrapped around the histone octamer during the organization or uh, while uh, attaining a more condensed form now coming to histone proteins actually the histone proteins have the same primary structure all the histone proteins have the same primary structure histones are nothing but proteins and uh, as i said um, uh, the primary structure of proteins of all these histone proteins is similar but they undergo certain chemical modifications as a result of which they either uh, promote transcription or inhibit transcription so coming to the next slide I'll be discussing about these modifications in this uh, in this session. That is, these modifications make a region of gene either transcriptionally active or inactive. Now, coming to the modifications, the first modification which I'll be discussing about is acetylation. Acetylation is nothing but addition of acetyl group. So the uh, the addition of acetyl group um, to the histone proteins when there is an increased acetylation the dna is stopped from further getting con condensed and as a result of which active transcription of genes takes place now how does this take place now
say suppose this is a histonoctamer and acetylation has taken place that is addition of acetyl groups has taken place acetylation has taken place so here we can see that negative charge of the acetyl group and the positive charge of the histone have got nullified so as a result of which the dna which is wrapped around it is left loose the dna which is wrapped around is it is left loose now the um, various transcriptional enzymes various polymerases rna polymerases can act on the gene as a result of which the transcription and respective translation takes place so acetylation of histone proteins promotes transcriptional activation a certain set of enzymes known as histone acetyl transferases are basically histone acetyl transferases histone acetyl transferases are known uh, which help which promote the acetylation and hence Uh, transcriptional activation and the opposite is done with histone uh, deacetylases so they deacetylate the histone proteins as a result of which the transcriptional activation is um, inhibited so when there is the uh, uh, when then there is an increased uh, acetylation active transcription of genes takes place now coming to the next modification which is phosphorylation that is addition of phosphate groups now the addition of phosphate groups takes place to serine or threonine residues now histone 3 protein gets specifically phosphorylated at its serine position serine 10 position and this helps during mitosis and meiosis we very well know that during mitosis and meiosis the chromosomes acquire a most condensed form and the phosphorylation at the serine 10 residue of histone 3 promotes the condensation which is required for mitosis and meiosis now apart from this uh, the phosphorylation also uh, stimulates the uh, stimulates or uh, it increases the activity of certain acetyl transferases as a result of which again uh, transcriptional activation takes place so here again the fundamental uh, the phenomenon is same that is the addition of phosphate groups the addition of phosphate group which is again negatively charged which is negatively charged which neutralizes the positive charge of histone proteins and as a result of which the dna is let loose and is susceptible to the action of rna polymerases and as a result of which active transcription of the gene takes place so the phosphate group uh, specifically uh, phosphorylizes the serine 10 residue of the um, histone 3 protein apart from that it also activates activates certain acetyl transferases now moving to the next slide which discusses about the next modification that is methylation which is nothing but addition of methyl group now addition of methyl groups to lysine and arginines now depending upon the position or depending upon the specific amino acid residue which gets methylated the activity is also transcriptional activity is also different this can either stimulate or inhibit the gene transcription at that region this is more clear in the slide so the methylation of histone 4 at arginine residue which is placed in the fourth position uh, opens up the chromatin structure leading to the transcriptional activation and similarly methylation of histone 3 on their lysine residues which are present in the fourth and 79th position opens the chromatin structure and it again leads to transcriptional activation 
whereas uh, when the histone 3 is methylated on its lysine residues present at 9th and 27th position it leads to the condenses condensation of the chromatin structure so uh, more condensed form means it is less susceptible to the uh, rna polymerases or the enzymes of transcription and this in turn leads to transcriptional inactivation now moving to the next slide which tells about the uh, next modification which is ubiquitination so ubiquitin molecule is nothing but it is a 76 amino acid protein and uh, this is ubiquitously distributed and it is highly conserved throughout the eukaryotic organism now when this particular ubiquitin molecule uh, gets attached or uh, to the histone proteins it shows different uh, different changes that is ubiquitination of h2a protein leads to transcriptional inactivation that is transcription levels are suppressed whereas if ubiquitination takes place in the h2b protein it leads to transcriptional inactivation that means transcription is enhanced more amount of transcription and more amount of protein synthesis takes place so this is how the respective modifications bring about uh, change in transcription that is some modifications either enhance or some modifications suppress the transcription. Thank you.